Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us for our, our RallyCap onboarding session. Uh, my name is Lucas. Uh, I work for the Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, I work with the Blue Jays Baseball Academy, where we focus on connecting with youth across Canada. So I'm thrilled to be joining all of you today. Uh, on behalf of the Toronto Blue Jays, we couldn't be more excited to be partnering with Baseball Canada on the RallyCap program. We strongly believe in what the program is all about and are happy to be providing our resources to improve the program and incorporate a, a refreshed look and feel um, to years past. We're incredibly excited to have uh, over 500 people joining us from all across the country with uh, a variety of different uh, connections to the Rally Cap program. Um, we have uh, baseball association presidents, association executives, uh, board members, uh, coaches, volunteers, uh, and parents. Uh, some of which who are, are new to Rally Cap and others who have been a part of the program for a number of years. So we just want to welcome everybody and, and thank you for joining us today. Um, I'm, I'm joined by Adam Morissette, uh, who works with Baseball Canada. Uh, Adam has a strong knowledge of, of Rally Cap um, being a part of Baseball Canada, but also uh, as a Rally, Catch, a Rally Cap coach himself as he runs a program in his local community just outside of Ottawa. So He'll be a great resource today to talk about the program itself. Um, he'll be leading the presentation and speaking more about what Rally Cap is all about uh, and speak on about um, your association and how they'll incorporate it uh, for this season. As I mentioned in, our e in the email leading to this session, this is really designed to be an interactive resource. So we encourage you to use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen to submit your questions. Um, we'll, we're gonna be disabling the chat feature. So, so please use the Q&A function um, for all questions. With that said, we know some of you pre-submitted questions and thank you for doing that um, as part of your registration. And, and we've done our best to answer those throughout the, the duration of this presentation. And, and with that said, uh, we're likely gonna wait to answer questions until the end, as there's a good chance we'll probably answer them throughout the presentation. So that's all uh, really for me. Uh, I will be turning over to Adam in a second here. Um, I, I'll be coming back at the end, uh, happy to answer any questions about the Blue Jays involvement the resources we're providing um, and, the, and the new rally cap hats, which Adam will talk, will touch on, um, which some provinces have, have received recently and, and the remaining provinces will receive in the next, next week or two. So um, thank you again to everybody who, who's joining us today and, and I'll turn it over to Adam and I'll see everybody at the end. Thanks, Lucas. Um, I think Lucas did a, a tremendous job kind of capturing everything that we're trying to, uh, trying to accomplish tonight. But uh, I'd just like to echo Lucas's comments on on how excited we are to have the, the number of folks that are on the call tonight. And uh, certainly the past few months have, have been busy for, for baseball associations across the country. And we've certainly uh, been working hard with the Blue Jays and, and our provincial members to uh, kind of get the word out about Rally Cap um, a little bit more than we have in previous years. We're, we're super excited to be partnering with the Blue Jays and, and obviously our 10 provincial, our 10 provincial members on rally cap and and refreshing some of the resources and uh and and really just just uh, spreading the word on the program um and, and the value of the program across the country and, and really giving uh not only the young athletes but the coaches as well you know a positive first experience in baseball certainly at the this initiation level so so as Lucas mentioned, uh, my name is Adam Morissette. Um, I've been with Baseball Canada for 12 years in a capacity of uh, media and public relations coordinator. So with the on the communication side of things, uh, mostly with our national teams, uh, but also you know touching some other areas of the business, including uh, national championships, our coaching program, umpiring program, that type of thing. But uh, I'm here tonight with 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 my uh, my rally cap hat on. No no pun intended there. Um, as Lucas mentioned, I, I do run a program in Ottawa, just east of Ottawa and Orleans and have done so for the past five years. So a little bit of experience there. Uh, started with 50 kids. We're, we're about 150 now and, and uh, growing and, and certainly trying to improve our program um, as much as possible every year. We're, we're pretty excited about this season. We'll be starting in, in three or four weeks time. So uh, excited about that. I'm just going to go through a uh, slide presentation. And uh, again, the goal here tonight is just um, is just to give give folks on the call uh, who haven't been involved in Rally Cap in the past just a, an overview of the program. And uh, there's some folks that may be running Rally Cap, which is great, or some folks who 
ran rally cap, maybe got out of it and are back doing it now. So, so again, the goal here is to, just to provide as much information as possible. So just a little bit of history about the program, although rally cap may be new to, to some folks on the call tonight, it's actually a program that was uh, launched in 2006. And that was one of the outcomes of baseball Canada's long-term athlete development program. And one of the reasons why is just on uh, some of the feedback we were receiving, um, you know, through focus groups, things like that, is that, uh, you know, kids were not having a great first experience in baseball. They weren't engaged, there were low retention numbers, and they just weren't having fun. So, so this is kind of where Rally Cap came, came to be. It was something that was developed with uh, people in, inside the Baseball Canada office, the Canadian baseball community, at the local and provincial levels and and we started it we piloted it and and the program that we have here today is essentially is essentially the same program that's been running in 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 uh, large portions of the country since 2006 and then of course as lucas mentioned 2022 we're extremely excited to uh, to be partnering with the blue jays academy refreshing some of the resources that i'll get into get into a little bit later in terms of the video content practice plans, those type of resources, and of course the, uh, the co-branded Blue Jays Baseball Canada cap that all Rally Cap participants will be, will be wearing in 2022. So something that's pretty cool. So again, uh, some of this information are, 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 is available on rallycap.ca. These are the goals of the program. I'll just go through them really quick. Um, so the first one's just to create a fun environment in which children and adults are actively engaged together in the game of baseball and how do we do that we're using fun of course is is the, is the main point there using fun games to make baseball learning positive and fun and of course we want to encourage that interaction between our coaches parent helpers and the athletes so number two develop fundamental motor skills teach baseball skills basic rules to the athletes and how are we gonna do that? We're gonna do that by organizing practices that maximize learning. We wanna cut down on the standing around time and we really want kids to be engaged, moving, doing things like that. When you're moving, when you're participating in baseball, the learning factor goes up. Um, you learn the game, you understand the game a lot better when you're doing it as opposed to listening to it or, or standing around. So that, that's really important. Number three is experience success with an emphasis on respect and fair play. This success component of Rally Cup is really, really important. First off, we wanna recognize that there's different levels of ability with the athletes, especially, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight years old, but we really wanna to cater to those abilities. And, and I'll get into that a little bit more later, but the, the success of the program, um, having the children start at one level and graduate to another, that's really, uh, a big, big component of the program. And of course that leads into number four, which is promoting increased self-esteem amongst rally cap participants. So when kids are, are experiencing that success, when they're accomplishing something, when they're graduating the levels of the program, they're gonna feel better about themselves and, and they're gonna be more engaged in baseball and hopefully wanna be involved in baseball um, for their entire life. Active for life is a term used in long-term athlete development. And that's, that's what we wanna do. We wanna create uh, lifelong experiences through the sport of baseball. And the final one is, is recruiting new coaches, parent helpers and volunteers. Largely that's, that's the room that I'm speaking to uh, this evening. So that's yourselves. So first off, thanks very much um, you know, for, for taking the opportunity to be here, but not only that, but, but to, to get involved with your local association and really make a difference in your program and ultimately in the lives of uh, the athletes and, and their families. So I'll jump right in here. Uh, this is the Rally Cap program format. So I just outlined some key concepts here. Uh, the first thing you'll notice, um, our practice plans, our Rally Cap mini book, which I'm gonna be talking about later, which is available on rallycap.ca. That's based on a 10 week program fully understand that uh, there's, there's different situations, different resources, considerations uh, to take into consideration at the local level. 10 week program might not be ideal given weather, given field access, given the amount of volunteers you have. Um, some people might wanna go longer. They might have a 12, 14 week program. Some people, maybe they can only do uh, some groups, maybe they can only use six to eight weeks, but uh, we have it uh, listed as a 10 week program. 
I'll just give you a little little uh, story. I might do this <laughs> a little bit throughout the evening is just referencing my own program here in Ottawa. We do 11 weeks. The first week is kind of like a get to know you, get your uniform, get to know your teammates, get to know the coaches, parent helpers. And then week two, we jump into that 10 week program. So the first, uh, I'll say the first pillar of the Rally Cat program is the three team approach. So this is obviously different than traditional baseball or some of the other programs, initiation programs, where it'll be a two, a two team approach. Rally Cap is built on a three team approach. Um, so at the end of a Rally Cap session, um, your team, your young athlete will have played two Rally Cap games and had one uh, Rally Cap practice in the outfield. So it's three teams. There's a game going on. There's a practice going on in the outfield. After one inning, 15, 20, 25 minutes, depending on the situation, you have a rotation. So one team goes into the outfield. The team from the outfield or the practice comes in to play a game. And then you have another rotation 20 minutes later, 25 minutes later, what have you. And that's it for your, your session. So it's an hour, hour and 15 minutes, hour and a half, probably maximum, depending with the older players. Some groups go a little bit longer. But it's, it's that three-team approach that is a real key component to the Rally Cap program. So the second one is it's six-on-six six baseball. That's really important at the Rally Cap level as well. Um, we really feel that, um, you know, the, those players on the – so it's your infield positions, it's third base, shortstop, second base, first base, pitcher, catcher. You know, if, if a ball's hit to the outfield and left field, for example, that third baseman, the shortstop, you go and get the ball and bring it back in. We just feel that that those that six on six, it's a, it's a nice small group, a nice manageable number. Kids get lots of reps. I'm going to get into it a little bit later when it comes to um, some of the things we do on defense or encourage groups to do on defense where kids get to play different positions every every uh, after every batter. And that's that's a real key component of rally cap is that six V six. The third pillar is that progress report. Uh, we used to refer to it as, as a report card. We're calling it a progress report now, um, where at the end of the season, each player will have a progress report that will uh, identify a level of the program that they've achieved. That kind of leads into, into my next point here, which is what changes um, have occurred in the rally cap program from, I guess, old rally cap, the way it's been run to, to what we're doing this year. And of course, with partnership with the Blue Jays. The first one is that multicolored cap system. So there were six caps, white, gray, black, uh, green, blue, and red. And uh, kids would graduate through the different levels of the program and they would be awarded a rally cap colored hat. Based on feedback that we've received that uh, from that aspect of the program, we have remove that element of the program in favor of a, a sticker system. So now when a, when a child achieves a certain level of the program, and, and I can talk about the new level names right now, I still have to get used to them myself, um, but the first level, so formerly white cap is, not, is now referred to as on deck. Uh, the next level is called home plate. And then we've got single, double, triple, and home run. So the former red cap, which would have been the final uh, cap you would have received as a rally cap athlete is now called home run. So instead of handing out caps, we are now um, awarding stickers, which there's a nice uh, spot in the rally cap uh, progress report. We can't call it report card progress report where the coach or the evaluator can place that sticker and the athlete will have that progress report and sticker uh, given to them at the end of the season. The next one is, is refresh resources on rallycap.ca. I'm going to re, be referring to rallycap.ca quite a bit. And that's our mini book, um, which contains the, the rally cap practice plans based again on a 10 week program. And then uh, the final one, which we've referred to um, a little bit is the Blue Jays Baseball Canada cap, which you can see a photo of on, on your screen. One other thing I forgot to mention with the resources, is all of the activities for Rally Cap, all 29 drills, I like to refer to them as activities, are available on rallycap.ca. There's a button right on the page. I'm gonna share a screen towards the end of the presentation that's gonna show you where all that information is located. And the, the videos, there's, there's 29 videos for all the Rally Cap activities uh, hosted on Baseball Canada's YouTube page, really making it easy, nice 30, 40 second videos 
really making it easy for your, your coaches, your parent helpers, your volunteers to get a nice video reference of what exactly um, is supposed to be happening with, with all the rally cap activities. Okay, team sizes. Again, um, fully mentioned or fully aware that that uh, resources, registration numbers, coaches, that type of thing is different in each each association across the country. But in terms of team sizes, we recommend team sizes in the range of six to nine players per team. Obviously, it's six on six baseball, so six is ideal. Um, also, um, just on the point below, attendance is going to vary throughout the season. So you're playing rally cap in the summer months. What happens if, you know, three of your players are on vacation or three players are sick, sick, all of a sudden your team size is down to three players. So we think it's okay to go to that up to that seven, eight, nine range. I think, I think if, if you have four players that are on a team, I think that's kind of the minimum where you can still get that rotation from, your, your infield players where it's third base, shortstop, second base, first base. Uh, we like to have a pitcher and a catcher as well, but it's not essential to run a program. So, you know, there is some flexibility there. And, 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 we and I like to recommend two or three coaches or parent helpers per team, especially if, you, if, you're, if your team sizes are in that six to nine range. So this is going to allow for two, one, two, three stations uh, during your practice time. So you can split your group up, you can have two groups of three, you can have two groups of four, you can have three groups of three, which really maximizes the reps um, and the quality of, of your practice where, um, you know, you're going you're gonna to be together for six to eight minutes per station, uh, let's say. So the kids are in, engaged for that six minute period, that eight minute period, and then they're moving on to something else. So that really helps, uh, helps address that, um, that engagement piece. Um, composition of, of your roster. So, so this is this is a tricky one, or it can be a tricky one. I've got I've got three things listed there. So, so ability. So, ideally, you want to have your your teams uh, composed based on ability. Um, you know, it's it's better for the kids to that are of similar ability to learn together, to progress together. But that always isn't ideal. Uh, you've got age, age to consider. You've got friend requests to consider, which are really important things too. So, so, so that's kind of left up to the association. I can tell you the program that, that, that I run, we, we do it pretty much by age, but we also try to accommodate friend requests, which is, which is a big uh, component, component of the enjoyment factors, that friend request. Uh, people sign up for baseball because their buddies, their friends are involved. So we want to make sure that that uh, that that component is addressed as well. I think if you go with age, you're going to be you're 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 going to have it in nicely in that range where you know kids of similar age. Chances are they're of similar ability. There's going to be outliers for sure, but um, that, that's, those are just some some considerations when uh, composing your team. Equipment. This is a big one. Uh, this is certainly one that uh, that was that was um, we received some questions on. So so what I did is I is I just separated the two into essentials, things that that you must have in your equipment bag and your field set up and then some recommended items as well. So so different types of balls, certainly with the activities, a lot of the throwing and receiving, especially at the younger ages, different types of balls. So I've got softballs, softball, wiffle balls, tennis balls, etc they're really key to, to some of the activities in rally cap throwing and receiving. Often we get the kids with, to take their gloves off, bare hands. And if it's a softer softball size ball, that's a lot easier to catch, easier to throw a little bit. Certainly wiffle balls for wiffle batting practice. Uh, tennis balls, one of the activities involves a tennis racket uh, and can be, and can be uh, accomplished using tennis balls. And, and I would say at minimum you want at least 12 types of not 12 different types of balls sorry but 12 balls of some sort uh in your practices and that's probably on the low end i think you probably want more but uh, i think you'll be able to successfully run a practice with uh, with 12 balls and then a variety of balls with that so uh, as far as bats go uh foam and regular bats certainly with your younger players you know a four five six year old that real bat that aluminum bat that, that's hard for some kids to to, to swing properly. And of course you want to build a proper swing with proper 
swing mechanics. So sometimes placing that foam bat in their hands is a lot easier for them to, uh, to swing and swing properly. The barrel of the bat tends to be a little bit larger and uh, they, have, they have a lot more success um, hitting that ball. So I, I, again, I'd say four for the outfield practice. Uh, what you'll find more and more these days, certainly compared to when I was growing up playing baseball, is that kids are gonna have their own bats, which is fine. But you want to make sure you've got bats for for gameplay and then and then bats for your practice as well. Not sure about the size of bat to to use. Uh, we've got some we've got some uh, videos on Baseball Canada's YouTube page with our partner at Rawlings, uh, which which tells you how to size up bats for for your young athletes. So two sets of bases, um, one ba one set of bases obviously for your game and another set for the outfield practice. There's base running activities in each of the practice plans so you're going to want to set up a base running uh, station or a field in your outfield practice three batting tees you're going to need one batting tee for your your game uh, certainly at the younger age groups and then uh, same thing with the younger age groups you're going to want batting tees available in the outfield for that that practice part of it uh, six cones this is going to help with some of the the agility uh, um, drill some of the physical literacy um, pieces to the program and then also hula hoops and having brackets there great for positional play so uh, one of the great ideas that came from another association I think that's something that's been part of rally cup for a while now is placing hula hoops where the position is on the field so you say to a young player go play second base what does that young player do they run to second base the actual base well that's not necessarily where where second base plays so you place that hula hoop down where you want the player positioned and it's a lot easier for them to kind of recognize like, oh, that's where a position is. I'm supposed to go and stand there. So hula hoops are great that you can also use them for targets too uh, with some of the other activities. So, so certainly recommend and, and suggest having hula hoops in your equipment. Uh, two to three tennis rackets. Again, as I mentioned earlier, a couple of the activities certainly with the younger players um, incorporate swinging a tennis racket as opposed to as a, a baseball swing with a tennis racket as opposed to using a bat again that whole success piece ties in there um, so tennis rackets are essential and then recommended badminton birdies again there's there's some activities that involve badminton birdies a toss net or a screen something that you can throw a ball into and throwing targets so i mentioned hoops that type of thing um, they work as well a fence, a regular fence at a baseball field also works for, for, some of the, uh, for some of the activities. I just have here a visual piece as well. These are, these are two balls that, that my program certainly uses. Um, they're balls by Rawlings. Um, it's a softer baseball, certainly the one on top for that safety component. And it's the exact same uh, size in terms of dimensions of the baseball and weight as a regulation size baseball. And the one below is, is also a ball that Rawlings offers. And uh, again, it's a softer core baseball and it's a little bit smaller, that, that eight, eight and a half inch ball. And it's a little bit lighter too. So certainly with your younger players, gripping that regulation size baseball, that does present some challenges for the smaller hand. So that's where this, this smaller uh, ball comes into play. And it's certainly something that, uh, that we use at the younger age groups and uh, something that's beneficial when you're really trying to, to get that proper grip on the ball. Okay, gameplay. So um, a rally cap game. So again, while two teams are playing a game and the third team's in the outfield, a rally cap game is one inning in length. And this is where all players have a turn at bat. Likely the same as, as some of the other initiation programs in baseball where everyone gets an at bat. The beauty about this is our roster sizes are smaller. Our team sizes are smaller. So it's, it's six to nine players. Again, probably that sweet spot is six or seven where everyone gets a turn at bat. I have listed here that you can play longer if time warrants. So, you know, let's say you've only got four or five players. Hey, maybe you can play two innings in that kind of 15, 20, 25 minute uh, time period and get, get, your, uh, get your young players more at bats. But, but the rally cap game is one inning in length. So it, it, it's regular baseball in terms of uh, for the most part where there's a, you know, there's a batter up to bat, there's kids playing defense and, and they're trying to hit that ball and put the ball into play. So three kind of components for the hitter. Um, there's the batting tee, 
a lot of your younger players will be starting with a batting tee. And then the next progression would be an underhand front toss. And, and why we recommend an underhand front toss is it's, I think it's a lot easier to, to a, for a coach or a parent ha uh, helper to accomplish as opposed to a regular overhand baseball throw. First of all, um, the eye level of the athlete, it's going to be a lot more aligned with a toss coming from underhand as opposed to a, a toss coming from overhand. Some of the tosses coming from up here, a child's eyes might be looking up because the ball is traveling kind of over their head and on a downward trajectory towards the, uh, the hitting area or, you know, that pitch could be low. So I think the underhand front toss um, is a lot easier to accomplish. You could do it from 15 to 20 feet away. Um, and it gives, it gives the batter, it gives the hitter a lot more opportunity for success. And it gives the, to tell you the truth, it gives that coach or parent helper a lot more opportunity for success, I think, too, when they're doing that, that underhand toss. And the final one is, uh, is a pitching machine that you, you might want to incorporate at uh, your older levels of rally cap. There's different options available. The one that we use, uh, there's different price points, of course. The one that we use is uh, it's the, the Blue Flame pitching machine, spring-loaded. Um, it, it works out pretty well. Um, it's, it's pretty cost-effective. It works out pretty well uh, for delivering a nice pitch to the hitter, more so at the, that, that older age group. We place, we place it you know, th uh, 35 to 40 feet away, and there's different velocities you can play around with. But... Uh, it works quite well. So those are kind of the three options. And then of course, the, the last thing I have listed there for the hitter is, is you want to ensure the success of the batter. Uh, there's no striking out, there's no walking and rally cap. Even if your, your athlete is starting with an underhand toss or even a pitching machine, if they're struggling, put the tee in front of them, let them whack the ball off the tee, let them put the ball in play, let them have success. I think one thing is, is probably similar in a lot of the programs you're used to running is, you know, my kids, too, my child's too good for the tee or the, the athlete thinks I don't want to hit off the tee anymore. I want to hit off a pitch or I want to hit off a pitching machine. Yeah, completely understand that. But, but if, if a child is struggling, um, you know, you can explain that, uh, that a batting tee is, is a useful tool that's used from, from rally cop level all the way to the big leagues. It's about building a foundation of a swing. And, and, and like I was mentioning, it's, it's about having success. So, probably give your athlete you know four pitches if they're not successful on those four pitches throw the tee in there let them get the ball in play and let the game move on so on defense uh certainly outs can be recorded in the traditional way pop fly you catch the ball um your older level players fielding a ground ball force plays throwing it across the diamond that's all great stuff um, at the earlier levels, those things are hard to accomplish. Um, certainly in my experience, four or five, six years old, I could probably count on one hand the amount of traditional baseball outs that were recorded in a rally cap game. So again, we want to give these players the opportunity to have success. So one of the things we encourage in rally cap, a ground ball is hit. First of all, the young child needs to field the ground ball correctly, which, which is a win right there. And if they do, we encourage them to touch the closest base to them to record an out. So that's one of the ways where, where we're kind of modifying the game to make it a little bit easier to understand, easier to have success for the, uh, for the young player. And of course, there's different things you can do in terms of like a scoring system. If a player catches a pop fly, you can award two defensive runs. If they make a force play, you can, avo you can award a um, an out. Or, or a point, that type of thing, you can be as creative as you wish. I'm going to skip down to number four here on defense. That's catcher's gear. That was a question that was submitted before. If you are using a catcher, certainly that player needs to be in full catcher's gear. Uh, the program I'm involved with the past couple of years, we didn't have catcher's gear or, or catcher, sorry, because of that whole sharing equipment piece, uh, given, given the circumstances of the past two years. But if, if your association does decide to use a catcher, um, certainly have that player dressed in, in full catcher's gear with that safety component. Uh, another thing, another suggestion on defense is during transition. So your team's just finished batting. They're going on defense now while the other team's getting their helmets on or you're waiting for that team coming from the practice area to come and join you to play a game. Certainly rolling 
grounders, um, you know, that whole throwing and receiving component of the program that can be really be addressed during that time. You roll five grounders per session or, or pop flies, another throw, that's, you know, 50, 60 additional repetitions that those young players are getting throughout the season if, if you multiply it by the amount of sessions that you have. So certainly encourage that. I'm going to get into point number two, the rotation of defensive positions. I've got a slide, a nice visual slide on the next one. So I will get into that in a moment, but that, that's certainly something that we recommend. Skipping down to base running. So one base at a time to start, and that kind of plays into the fourth point, which is avoiding what I call avoiding the Little League home run. The Little League home run is great. The kid whacks it. The ball's being thrown all over the field. He's running. The parents are screaming and yelling. The team's screaming and yelling. Everyone's having a great time. The kid touches home plate. Everybody cheers. Well, that, that, that is great. It is fun. But has the child learned how to run the bases? Um, you know, if, 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 um, if they were to just stop at a base, uh, they haven't, if, if they've done that. And of course, are we teaching our defenders the right thing by having them throw the ball all over the diamond out of bounds, that type of thing. So certainly to start your season, we, we definitely recommend one base at a time. So a kid does whack one. That's great. Great hit. Great job, buddy. But you're going to stay at first base and you're going to run the bases um, one base at a time to start. So the next player gets up to bat, they hit the ball into the into into play. That player is advancing one base at a time. Certainly, as you you move, you progress in your season. Um, maybe you can you can do two bases at a time. That's something we do at the older levels. I've also got listed here. If there's an out recorded, you can still you know it's a pop fly or a force play. You you can we still encourage you to have that runner remain as a base runner and explain to them, okay, you hit the ball, great hit. That ball was caught in the air. So in traditional baseball, you would normally be out in that situation. But we are, since it's one base at a time, we are going to allow you to be a runner. And then that athlete gets the opportunity to experience being a base runner and moving up one base at a time. One great thing that, uh, that kind of came out of what we've been going through the past two years, if there is one great thing from a from a rally cap perspective uh, was a suggestion that came uh, from some folks out in Alberta, I believe, and that's where they start the inning. So start each inning with the bases loaded. Uh, I think it was because you know, ensuring that six feet apart, that two meters apart, you know, kids are waiting for their turn to bat. They're all going to be sitting shoulder to shoulder on the bench. We're going to have six kids in a row. So to address that, why don't we start the the inning with the bases loaded? And then there's, you know, maybe three or four kids that can be nicely spaced out. So I think that's certainly something that I did with the program that I'm involved with. And it worked really, really well. Um, so your last hitter, uh, what have you, is starting starting on first base. And they're, they're advancing one base at a time. So they get, to, they get to run the bases twice, basically. Having more kids involved, having more kids engaged, and then having more kids um, learning about the game through, through being a base runner. So that, that's an option, but, but certainly something that is recommended and again was, uh, was a pretty good idea. The next slide uh, I'm going to talk about is that whole defensive rotation piece. So just to give you a visual here, as I was mentioning, one of the, uh, one of the key components of rally caps, certainly something that is highly recommended Something that does take a bit of commitment on behalf of your, your coaches, parent helpers, volunteers, is that defensive rotation after each batter during game play. So this is just a sample. As you can see, uh, I, the black team or the, the black writing, um, it's, it's, uh, it's your traditional baseball position. So third base, shortstop, second base, first base, pitcher. The catcher is gonna stay uh, stationary throughout, fully dressed, of course. Um, so this is based on a roster size of nine players. So this also really helps with the whole piece of, I want to be shortstop. I want to be second base. I want to be pitcher. Yes, you are going to be those positions, but you're going to get a chance to play all of the positions. So uh, that's really the beauty of it there. So for example, third base, play, uh, ball is in play, next batter up to bat. Okay, now you're moving to shortstop. Shortstop's moving to second base. Second base is moving to first base. Pitch, uh, first base is moving to pitcher and the pitcher is off. 
So P1, P2, P3, those are your subs. Again, this is based on a nine player roster. You're gonna sit off for two or three batters and boom, you're right back into the game. The yellow team, if you will, I've got, uh, I've got the R's at each base. Those are our runners that are starting, starting the innings with the bases loaded. You've got the batter in the, in the, uh, in the batter's box, and then you've got your, your four batters that are, that are waiting for their turn to come up to bat. Another, another piece just to note on this slide is, is the coach positioning. So certainly you want to have a coach placed near your subs to kind of uh, manage that aspect with, you know, the three players that are kind of off to the side, they can be on the bench. They can be off and at a safe distance from, from, uh, from where the ball is. And a coach is kind of managing that aspect of the rotation. And then you've also got a, another coach on the, on the, on the black team with that that's kind of in the back of the infield, so to speak, that's kind of managing uh, those players if the balls hit out there or or the rotation for your your shortstop your second base and first base and then and then uh, of course for for the other team the opponent the team that's up to bat you're going to have a coach in that pitcher's area either operating a uh, pitching machine or doing that uh, doing that underhand front toss and then uh, then you're also going to have a coach kind of managing the batting order perhaps managing uh, a t if you're using a t with your athletes and then finally, um, you also want a coach or a parent helper kind of around the catcher backstop area just to manage, manage balls that get back there. Certainly would recommend the coach managing those balls instead of the catcher just so we could keep the game moving at a quicker pace. And then, and then on the top right corner, that's our practice area. Um, it doesn't have to be in the right field area. It could be in center field. It can be in left field. Certainly understand that there's different circumstances at, at diff with different local levels so um, just in in this example the practice area is in that right field area but the rotation again like I mentioned it, it does take some commitment certainly at the beginning of the season there's going to be you know kind of a little bit of confusion but I think as you find uh, the more your season progresses the kids are going to be certainly aware that they're going to be expected to move after each batter and it's it, it really is quite nice to see as you progress through your season, um, you know, kids that are engaged in the game, they're paying attention to the batter and they know that they have to move. They know that they're sitting off the, for this batter and they know that they're going to be getting right back into the ball game. So that's a really, really key aspect of rally cap. And it addresses so much of what we're trying to accomplish in terms of having kids engaged in the game of baseball moving around the physical literacy piece all of that um, it's really really something that's uh, great to have in your program so practice plans uh, as i mentioned rally cap mini book that's available on rallycap.ca in that mini book all the, the practice plans for the for the 10 based on a 10 week program are in that mini book there's some explanations in there given each of the levels of the program but the, the rally cap practice plans, the 10 week practice plans, and for all six levels of the program are available in that mini book. Um, there certainly is flexibility around there. Uh, I think one thing that you'll notice right away is, wow, this is a lot to accomplish in that, uh, in that first, you know, this is a lot to accomplish in a, in a 20 minute practice. So don't worry about it. It's there to kind of provide variety. And, and I have listed here, it, down below um, where it's plan A, B, C, and D. And you're gonna find too um, during your season that kids are gonna kind of be more excited about certain activities than others. So I think that really kind of addresses that. But, but one of the main things that, that we certainly recommend is that each of your practices has that physical literacy, throwing and receiving component, which truthfully can, be, can really be addressed in your warm up portion of your your session whether that's a full group warm-up involving all three teams or you're warming up as individual teams that that piece can be addressed there and then of course base running and hitting so those are the kind of the five key components to each of our, our rally cap practices and you, you you'll certainly have time to to accomplish all those setting up your field in advance is essential so um, each of the practice plans it, it lists the equipment that is that is needed for for those practices. So, 
Um, again, just referring back to the program I'm involved with, our first session starts at 9 a.m. There's a few of us there, 8.15, 8.30 in the morning, setting up that, that practice area with, uh, with your base running station, your hitting station, you're making sure you have your bats, your balls, toss net, what have you, targets, those types of things, tennis rackets, different types of balls. All those things are part of your practice. Certainly also suggest, um, I'm sure many of your, your groups do this, um, certainly suggest to, to print out that practice plan and place it on, on the outfield fence for a quick, uh, quick reference. Certainly, you know, you're dealing with, with volunteers as, as most of you are. For some people, it's just, you know, it's just not possible. It's just a reality of, of youth sport that people aren't necessarily gonna read the practice plan if it's sent out beforehand, but hey, there it is. You take five minutes before your session, maybe while that warm up is going on and you get familiar with, uh, with what you're doing at practice that day. So again, mentioned uh, this one a little bit earlier, organizing your smaller groups for station to increase the reps. Um, certainly a question that, uh, that, was, um, that was submitted beforehand. I think the sweet spots for a station, certainly if you have uh, three, four, five athletes, is that six to eight minute range. Uh, kids are in, you know, the attention sh uh, spans are short. So if you have them engaged in activity for, for that period of time and then moving on to something else, I think you're really kind of getting those good quality reps in. The kids are engaged for that period, quick demonstration, um, and then they, then they move on with it. Kids learn while they're, while they're participating or, or doing something rather than listening. I, I certainly find as, uh, you know, with my involvement with baseball and a little bit with minor hockey. So um, certainly, certainly suggest to get them moving, get them active, get them engaged right away. So the plan, there, there is a lot of repetition in the plans and that's by design. Um, again, that's, that's kind of cutting down on that explanation, that demonstration. Uh, aspect of it you know if it's something that you did last week and it's in the practice plan again that's good you won't have to spend a lot of time explaining it uh, the next practice and and we've kind of conveniently named all the uh, all the activities so if you're you're like okay okay kids we're going to be doing the crocodile or we're going to be doing between the two or the wheel the kids as they move on throughout the season they'll recognize they'll know the names of those activities and then you can kind of get down to work quicker. Um, they'll pair off, what have you, whatever the activity suggests, they'll, they'll know what to do. Just that, that flexibility where you, can, where you can adjust according to your own specific program. Um, I mean, certainly the practice plans are there as a guide, as a resource. They're there for people to use, but you can adjust according to, uh, according to your own specific program. Again, suggesting that you have that physical literacy, throwing and receiving, base running and hitting components addressed. Rally cap day. So, so this is that, that evalu the evaluation component. This is where our progress report comes in. And, um, and, and we suggest to have at least one rally cap or evaluation day during your season. So when you, when you think about this, it may be intimidating for some, like the word evaluation where a child may feel or a family may feel that, that they're there and they need to perform on this day. But I think the messaging here is about celebrating the success, celebrating, you know, all the skills, all the great baseball knowledge, skills that they've acquired throughout the season and having that special day to kind of showcase those skills. You're going to be having kids probably around the same age, same ability, hopefully for the most part. And this is a day where they're all kind of um, participating together and, and, uh, and they're getting that kind of celebration to this to uh to the end of their season so um again this is probably going to be a little bit different than your traditional rally cap session in the sense that um and you'll see see on one of the next slides where we have our progress report um where, where you're going to set up in a, your field so you're going to have a hitting station where uh, the child's going to be evaluated you're going to have your base running station throwing and receiving stations and physical literacy literacy stations as well so some associations like to do the evaluation day at the beginning of the season uh, just to see where their kids are at and maybe form teams that way. Other associations, they may form their teams right from the registration process, taking into consideration friend requests, that type of thing. But certainly towards the end of the season, you definitely want to have a rally cap day. Uh, be, be creative as you like. You know, you could have face painting, barbecue, those types of things. Certainly. Um, 
probably with with most of the people on the call initiation levels of baseball chances are it's probably something you've done or you're doing already um but with the rally cop day it's it's just important to get that kind of evaluation component so again that you can fill out those report cards have your coaches have your par parent helpers or an evaluation committee there's different ways you can do it fill out those report cards um probably hand them out at your last session where the kids are are rewarded for the success that uh, that they've accomplished throughout the year and all the fun that they've had um, playing baseball. So that's just a little bit on Rally Cap Day. Brings us to to uh, to one of the final slides here is that progress report, and and that's something that uh, that you're going to be filling out for for all of your athletes to present to them at uh, at the end of the season. So I'm not going to go through. Through all the levels, um, this is something that's available on rallycap.ca, the progress reports. Of course, um, you're going to be getting those if you haven't received them already. Um, nice copy for, for, for your coaches to, to fill out towards the end of the season and present to the athletes. So just with the progress report, so certainly some things to keep in mind. So, so you're looking for the ability to, to execute the skill. One of the things I'll mention is, is chances are that before your, your uh, evaluation day, you're gonna have a pretty good idea as a coach or parent helper on, on the ability that, that your, your little athletes are at. So, you know, if they don't necessarily perform on rally cap day, um, you know, throwing that ball a certain amount of feet, what have you, but you know, you've seen them do it throughout the season, I would mark that as, as success right there. Certainly, as I mentioned earlier, um, it's a low stress environment. It's not a tryout. Nobody's making a team. It, make it as fun as you can. Again, that whole success piece is really crucial to the program. Uh, sense of accomplishment, it ties into the self-esteem aspect. There's, there's really some, some great messaging that, uh, that you can do to kind of make that rally cap day as fun as possible. Another great question, uh, that was submitted beforehand was um, should we keep track of our of the, the levels that the athletes have uh, have accomplished from year to year considering an athlete can be in rally cap for four or five years and, and the answer is a resounding yes you know you want to reward success you want to see where a player was at you know last summer August September they've grown they've played a little bit of baseball they're, they're going to be better the next season they're going to improve. So you certainly want to keep track of their progress. And uh, just final, final one, I uh, mentioned this a few times before, but uh, each player will receive that, uh, that progress report and it'll have a sticker on that progress report representing the, the level that they've accomplished throughout the year. So our resources page, we really want to encourage, encourage all you folks to, to reach out to your, your provincial associations. If you have any, uh, if you have any questions, uh, there, there are rally cap experts or rally cap leads in all provinces. Uh, that information you can find on baseball.ca, going to the about tab and, and there's, a, there's a link there for provincial associations. Rally cap mini book, practice plans, all the videos, rally cap activities, they're available on rallycap.ca. Uh, you go to baseball.ca under programs, rally cap initiation program, and then you land on the rallycap page or rallycap.ca and there's links there's nice uh, images image links for for the drills it takes you to our youtube page and then uh, access to the mini book which contains all the practice plans i think i'll stop there and then and then take any questions uh, you may have awesome thank thanks so much adam and and thanks everybody for for sticking with us for for that there's obviously a lot of information there and and hopefully this makes you feel a little more at ease um, running the program this year. I know um, Autumn is, is, a, is a, such a pro and an expert in this area. So feel free to keep the questions coming. Uh, our, 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 my lovely colleague, Jeff, uh, who's been in the chat helping answer some of these questions um, that, he, that he can answer and, and the rest um, I'll, I'll pass along to Adam here and, and we'll get answers for everybody. So um, I think you just touched on this, Adam, at the end, um, but Peter's asking, how often should evaluations uh, for the sticker purposes take place? Yeah, so uh, a couple of ways you can do it. Like I mentioned, some some folks like to do that uh, that evaluation at the beginning of the season, just to you know, maybe form teams or place groups of similar ability. 
but uh, like, I, like I mentioned in the slide, you, you need to do at least one evaluation day. And, and again, the program I'm involved with, we do that the second to last session of the year. You know, we got the clipboards out, all the, all the stations are there, the evaluators are, are, are marking the progress, mark, taking note of the success of the kids, and then we hand out those report cards on our last session of the season. Awesome. Chad, here's a question. Um, it looks like this is for two days a week. Uh, is the three uh, game format both days or is, is one day a 60 minute practice? Yeah, no, so it's, uh, so the rally cap session again is, uh, it's based on the three team approach. And it, it, at the end of a rally cap session, your, your, uh, your team will have played two little mini games and how to practice. So again, I know I mentioned at the beginning where it's, it's different in each association, um, different, different areas of the country, certainly. So the, the rally cap uh, mini book, the practice plans, it's based on a 10 week program. So if you're doing it two days a week, you're, you're having a five week program. If you want to spread it out a little bit more, yeah, it's, it's based on the 10 week program, but, but the rally cap session is too many games and a practice. Uh, Don is wondering, is the old app updated with the current information? Great question, Don. Unfortunately, it isn't. Uh, certainly, this is something we're going to look towards uh, in the off season. But for right now, um, the updated refresh practice plans mini book is available digitally on rallycap.ca. I'll just add on to that quickly that um, like with our involvement um, with, with the Rallycap program, like we were all about feedback and no baseball candidates as well. So if there's things like that throughout the year that you realize could be beneficial for the program, please let your provincial bodies know and, and they'll forward along that, those messages to us. Uh, we've got we have Melissa here. Um, do, you have, do you have places where you recommend where to purchase the foam bats in bulk uh, and any other equipment needed? Um, I, I would just recommend going to your, your local sporting goods store or whatever uh, contact your association has. Uh, chances are if they're purchasing equipment through a specific store supplier that, uh, that they will have that foam, uh, foam bat product available. Amy has a question here. How do you navigate foul balls? Yeah, I, I think what you mean, uh, Amy, is, uh, you know, if a kid hits a foul ball, what do you do? It's a foul ball and you want, uh, you want the, the ball to be put into play before the child takes off and, and runs to first base. If you're hitting, you know, if the kid is just hitting foul balls five, six, seven in a row, maybe at that point, <laughs> you might want to turn the tee or, or something to try and get that ball put into fair play. But maybe you're you're letting them hit and then you're rolling a ball into fair play just to kind of keep the game moving. Um, Dylan has a question. When you say proper shoe, does that mean cleats or just running shoes? Either is fine. Either is fine. Certainly see kids. Uh, I could talk about my own kids. My own kids play soccer. They have one pair of cleats. They use the soccer cleats when they're playing baseball, you know, baseball cleats. There's also kids that use running shoes, but, but bare minimum, they have to have those, those running shoes on certainly if the conditions are a little bit wet cleats help but uh running shoes are perfectly fine perfect standing in the question here during defensive rotation how do you get the helmet to the first base player who is transitioning into the pitcher rotation i assume the pitcher needs a helmet for safety reasons yeah again that's 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 kind of up to you i've seen programs that all their all their defensive players are wearing their helmets um, if your program feels that, that, uh, that the pitcher should be wearing a helmet, maybe it's that coach, um, parent helper involvement where they have the helmets, you know, on, on one of the benches and they're, they're tossing that helmet real quick for the pitcher to, to put on their head. There's, I've also seen programs where, you know, the pitcher is standing back at a safe distance. They're not necessarily 20 to 30 feet away. They're in that you know, 50, 50 foot range where it's a little bit safer. And of course you've got a coach or a parent helper that's in that area as well to, to ensure uh, the safety factor too. Great question from Todd. You, you've talked a lot about the three team approach. She's asking, yeah. um, can you use a four team approach? I mean, I don't see why not. Um, again, mentioned this a couple of times where, uh, where it's different according to, uh, to where you are in the country and registration numbers and whatnot. But I think, you know, one of the things why rally cop was designed is we, we were finding that that sessions may have been too long. 
So just make sure you're keeping that into consideration where you don't want, you know, a two hour, a two plus hour session at, at, at the younger age groups because the quality factor, the engagement factor may suffer a little bit. But you could, I think, have a mini rotation where maybe two teams are in the outfield practicing, certainly if you have the space. And then, you know, you would you would have a schedule where they would move around. Maybe you're only playing two of the teams out of the four that type of thing but I think I think the flexibility is there to to cater the program to whatever works to for your needs awesome Evan we got a little bit of a longer question here um, we live in a rural community with one team of approximately 12 players we travel once a week to play a game against another town with one scheduled practice a week and one game a week do you recommend having a practice day as activities only or splitting the team and having a mini game and activities yeah, I mean, I think 12 players is great because you can have, you can run a rally cap session. You know, maybe the two teams are practicing on their own for 20 minutes and then they're playing two 20 minute games. So I think 12 is fine. Certainly something that, uh, that we've had in the past, you know, with summertime and vacations where the numbers are a little bit low. So again, it, it's the flexibility. And uh, I, I think, though, in order to, to run like a true rally cap session, it's that rotation where, where you're, you are having that practice component and then you are having the two games. So, again, whatever works for, for your community, but uh, certainly suggest um, kind of keeping with, with the, the rally cap, the three pillars that I was talking about earlier and, uh, and, and certainly going with that. Uh, one from Anonymous here. Uh, do you have any strategy or advice on how to get parents to volunteer to help on the field and also want to be an assistant coach? How many helpers would you recommend is needed at each session? Yeah, so I think I mentioned that probably if, if you're, you're, your three-team approach is you want two to three uh, coaches or parent helpers to, uh, to be on hand. And I, I think sometimes the term coach may be a little bit intimidating. So maybe if, if you're saying, hey, we need, we need a few parent helpers to, to you know, uh, help with the sessions, help with the team, make sure the kids, you know, the kids that are waiting for their turn to bat, they are, you know, they have a parent with them to kind of help along with that process. I think, I think that's, that's kind of key. That's important is maybe how you shape it, how you message it, because I think I think people might get a little intimidated. Oh, I don't know anything about baseball. And, you know, I, I basically, I can't help. But I think with the resources that we've provided in terms of the video and uh, in terms of the practice plans where basically, you know, everything is kind of done for you, I think that really helps um, with those parent helpers. And, and the parents are there anyway. And one thing that's really worth, worth mentioning at this age group is that the kids really enjoy, certainly the kids that I'm involved with, they really enjoy when their parents are, are out there engaged and helping with the session. So I think maybe, maybe, maybe messaging a little bit different will uh, might uh, lead you to some, some success there. I'll just add on to, to that for Adam, besides all those great points, maybe, maybe another little selling point for, for coaches and, and, and parent helpers this year is, um, along with all the kids receiving that, that Blue Jays and Baseball Canada branded hat, um, those coaches as well re will receive uh, that, that hat as well in an adult uh, version of the size. So um, feel free to, to use that as a little bit of a, of a push as well on top of all things that Adam mentioned. Great point. Great point, Lucas. Um, Stephanie here uh, wondering about uh, the distance of the bases uh, in the infield. Yeah, I'd say in that, the 50 to 60 foot range. I think, I think you're good there, depending on, you know, four or five, six year olds, you might want to go in that foot, 50 foot range, maybe even, maybe even 45. And then certainly with, uh, with your older players, seven, eight years old, I think that, uh, that 55, 60 range is, uh, works really well. Awesome. Uh, keep the questions coming. If you have them, uh, I know Jeff's answering some in the chat and, um, these are great questions. So keep them coming. If you have any more. Um, Jer Jerry says, uh, we are aiming uh, at the 6U player um, with no catcher since the gear slows things down. So we would likely skip the higher levels and practice plans. Any comment on whether this is a good idea? 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's a good idea that you're still running rally cap for for that age. But I think what you you'll find and what I, I hope you'll find is that your players, when they're given that progress report at the end of the season, I think they'll want to continue on with the program, you know, when they're seven and eight years old. That that home run level, the former red cap level, that that's that's a hard level to to accomplish. Um, I, I don't think I've seen a, a six-year-old or a seven-year-old accomplish it, certainly in my experience with the program. So um, really, I, I would hope that, uh, you know, once your players see, um, see that there's some other levels of the program that they can aspire to, that they'll want to continue with the program when they're seven or eight years old. But I, I certainly, if you're saying you're running rally cap and you're only doing it for that 6U level, not going to, not going to say it's not a good idea. Certainly anytime you're doing rally cap, I think it's uh, I think it's a great idea. And I'm sure the, the Blue Jays feel the same way. Absolutely. Fred, here's a question. Um, in the case of rainouts, uh, we don't have time in our schedule for makeup sessions. Would you skip that practice plan or would you continue along the plan uh, in order? Concerned that the skills built on each other. Um, and if you miss one, the athlete is missing out. Yeah, I mean, that's going to happen. Uh, rainouts aside, you're going to have kids that are missing for various reasons. So, you know, I, I'd use your judgment on that one. And, you know, if it's if it's moving on, I mean, the, the, the plans are certainly um, designed to progress to, to different activities, but so are the individual activities themselves. So and I would recommend this, that if, you know, you're finding it's too difficult for your athletes or you're moving on to something too soon, don't feel like you have to move on to the next, uh, the next practice plan because it's week seven and, and, and you have to do the week seven plan. Again, uh, the success of the athlete, the development of the athlete, the self-esteem, all those things leading back to the goals of the program, that's what's most important. So I'd certainly, uh, certainly recommend that you just take that into consideration before, before making your decision. But uh, you don't don't feel like you need to to be on week seven because it's week seven. You you can cater your program to your your specific needs how you wish. Perfect. Um, Max's question here uh, about progress reports. When you're talking about progress report, what would you recommend the reward be for moving up? Uh, in years past, we use different colored hats, um, baseball Canada hats. Yeah, so it's the the uh, that uh, that component of the program, the the different colored caps, that's uh, that's removed in favor of of the sticker component. So, so each of uh, each of your players is going to receive that progress report, and they're going to get a sticker to signify the level of the program that they've accomplished. And then, of course, they they get the Blue Jays uh, cap, Blue Jays Baseball Canada co-branded cap. I've seen associations do do other things like trophies, medals. Uh, that type of thing, but at a minimum, they're going to get that progress report with the sticker, and they're going to get that uh, that Blue Jays cap to wear. That's something I uh, I wanted to mention earlier. That Blue Jays cap, Blue Jays baseball Canada cap. We want all the Rally Cup players wearing that cap throughout the season. So um, that's something that I think is going to be pretty exciting for for a lot of athletes and and coaches too. So wear that thing proudly and and be happy that uh, you're involved with the Rally Cup program. And then just to add on to that for, um, if we haven't mentioned already, the, the progress reports, those will also all be printed and, and the stickers as well will be um, provided to each association. So the provincial, your provincial body will um, send those out to you um, and those will all be printed for you. So no need to, to go out and print those on your own. Uh, Melissa has another question. This is our first year doing rally cap for our 5U. How often do players get moved up uh, from the levels? Yeah, um, that's a great question. I, I think certainly at that age, 5U, they're going to accomplish one level of the program. Probably at that level, it's going to be, it's going to be our first level, which is on deck. On deck. Um, I, I suspect that most of your little players will be at that level of the program. You know, maybe some of them might be at that home plate level, but generally, in a general sense, an athlete is accomplishing one level of the program in a, in a given season. Uh, this one's going to be for me, uh, it's from Peter. Um, how are the Blue Jays involved in the Rally Cap program? Is there any contact with players, video messages, et cetera? Um, it's a great question, Peter. I think um, for us, really a, a big part of this is, is really trying to provide our resources to improve the program where we can. And so um, a lot of the stuff that you uh, that Adam's talked about today, so 
um, those videos um, for uh, all the all the drills or activities Adam likes to call them um, were, were shot and redone by our by, by our full team. Um, the uh, the progress report was kind of uh, the refresh look was was done by our team here as well. The mini book, uh, things like that. The, the, really, the, the resources are, are the big one. Um, those those rally cap hats, um, we we played a big role in, in getting those out to all the associations and and having no costs associated with those hats for everybody being a part of the program, which is which is pretty great. Uh, and there's been lots of great enthusiasm, thankfully, for that co-branded hat. And then we're also providing um, each province. Um, with funding to to uh, have a rally cap coordinator in each province and so they'll kind of be the main point of contact for each association and really be able to have a dedicated person or, or people um, focused on being able to provide that support uh, for associations answer questions in some cases show up at fields and, and be a part of the whole experience so that's kind of our involvement uh, this year I think moving forward we'll continue to evaluate our, our partnership and, and how we can kind of continue to improve the program and we don't want to make any promises with players, um, but as of right now, just kind of providing those resources to improve the program where we can. Uh, Melissa has another great question. Uh, when will we be getting our box? I have not received anything. Melissa, great question. Um, I believe you're from Ontario. Um, and so uh, for Ontario folks, um, you'll be receiving that probably the next, the next week or two. And, and for folks in other provinces, pretty similar timeline if you've not received it already, probably in that similar timeline. However, I, I'd reach out to your provincial body um, and have them kind of uh, direct you with with the time frame that they'll uh, they'll they'll be able to shipping that out to to your association. Um, Brian, I think it's a very similar question. When should we expect our caps and resources to arrive? So same kind of comment there um, for folks in Ontario that they're probably arriving in the next week or two, and I would imagine that in other provinces it'd be a very similar timeline. Um, don't want to make any provinces. Just feel free to reach out to your provincial body, as Adam alluded to. If you don't know um, who that is. Um, Feel free to go to, to, to baseball.ca and um, and they'll be able to, to point you in the in, with the email and contact information there. Awesome. That that I think is everything that we have. Uh, I know there's a lot of questions that uh, Jeff answered in, in the chat on his own. So um, thanks, Jeff, for jumping in there. I think that's that's really all we have for today. Um, if you have any other additional questions for for Adam or for us at the Blue Jays. Um, feel free to reach out to us if it's anything specific about running the program, um, logistics, things like that. Uh, please reach out to your provincial body as, as they'll be a great resource to, to answer those questions for you. And again, on, on behalf of the Blue Jays, uh, just wanted to thank Baseball Canada for, for uh, kind of working together on this program and thank everybody here for, for getting, getting involved. And, and uh, we really believe that this is really the best entry level program in the, in the country and, and for the sport. And um, I know we're all passionate about the sport, and I think it's the best way to continue to grow it, um, keep kids playing, uh, get them excited about the game, and, and kind of continue in the sport, and, and hopefully uh, really, really love to, to, or really kind of learn to love the game that uh, we all love uh, ourselves. So um, thank you. Uh, I can turn over to Adam for any last words, but just want to thank everybody again for, for showing up and, and being a part of this and, and connecting with uh, the youth across the country as they really are the future of our game. Yeah, Lucas, uh, very well said, and uh, just just want to take the opportunity to thank everyone who hung with us. Certainly, uh, recognize that there's there's different time uh, different time zones to take uh, to, into consideration here across the country when we're trying to do do this type of exercise. But uh, to our friends in Atlanta, Canada, thanks for hanging in, and and certainly uh, our friends on the west coast of the western provinces. You know, it's it's not always easy with the, kind of that dinner time area, and then. And certainly our friends uh, here in, in the central part of the country. Thanks for, thanks for being here, and 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 thank you for for doing Rally Cap and and uh, and helping us along here with with the Jays. Uh, as Lucas mentioned, uh, th there's really no better program for those initiation levels of baseball. And and feel free to reach out, get in touch with your provinces. Certainly wish you all the best on your season, and uh, and and thanks for being here tonight. Thanks, everyone.